free will win. An excerpt from Tao Shu Buddha Upanishad, Volume 2 Religion Without God. There is a question how to see what is my will and what is God's will. People always consider and try to impose their will onto the divine will and there is a lack of harmony between your will and the God's will. There is a Chinese saying, man is a puppet when he acts, a poet when he describes. The Chinese saying says, man is a puppet when he acts, a poet when he describes. All that you think is your free will, is nothing but your poetry, nothing but your description. You are unconscious. An unconscious man cannot be free nor have any freedom then question does not arise of free will. Freedom comes as a consequence of consciousness. Freedom is the offspring of consciousness. If you are conscious and aware, you have freedom. Then your will will be a free will. Freedom is the function of consciousness. An unconscious man exists like a machine or robot. You may not know, but you are continuously functioning as a robot. Someone abuses you and anger arises. It is almost like when you push the button and the fan starts moving. The other has the remote control of your TV screen. It is not that one person alone has the remote control. Instead you have so many remotes circulated in the market. Somebody pushes the button and you become angry. Somebody pushes the button and anger starts reflecting on your inner screen. What kind of freedom is this? You do not have any choice to be angry or not to be angry. As if you are possessed by the remote that the other person has. You do not seem to have choice to be angry or not angry, to be happy or not to be happy. If there is no choice, there is no freedom. Freedom means freedom to choose. You can decide whether to be angry or not. Then you are free. But you can decide. At the most, you can decide to show your anger or not, that is another thing. But to be angry and not to be angry is your choice only when you are conscious. As an unconscious you are robot. This is the reason that I have included the message of Nakshbandi Sufi. Shakuntala Devi in Nakshbandi commandments. Thus she comes in the category of the Nakshbandi sheikhs. Hazrat Ibn Khali Gizdwani Razi Allah Ta'ala and Shah Bahauddin Nakshband. This Kalmat is the way to attain to freedom of choice. And without this you cannot grow in awareness. First of all you have the freedom of choice to choose this or that and you are not confused about it. 
to get angry or not to get angry, to be happy or not to be happy. The moment somebody pushes your button, you are angry instantly. Not a single moment is lost. There is no gap. You may not show it, that is another thing. You may control and repress, that too is another thing. But anger has flashed in your being. And about that you have no choice. You function like a machine. I have heard a Sufi parable. Once upon a time there was a huge magnet and it's in its close neighborhood lived some steel fillings. One day two or three little fillings fell a sudden desire to go and visit the magnet and they began to talk of what a pleasant thing it would be to be, what a pleasant things it would be to do. Other feelings nearby heard their conversation and they too began infected with the same desire. Still others joined till at last all the feelings began to discuss the matter. More and more their vague desire grew into an impulse. Why not go today? said one of them. But others were of the opinion that it would be better to wait till tomorrow. Meanwhile, without their having noticed it, they had been involuntarily moving nearer to the magnet which lay there quite still, apparently no heed of them, apparently taking no heed of them. And so they went on discussing all the time insensibly drawing nearer to their neighbor. And the more they talked, the more they felt the impulse growing stronger, till the more impatient ones declared that they would go that day. Whatever the rest did, some were heard to say that it was their duty to visit the magnet and that they ought to have gone long ago. And while they talked, they moved always nearer and nearer without realizing that they had moved. Then at last the impatient ones prevailed and with one irresistible impulse the whole body cried out, there is no use waiting, we will go today, we will go now, we will go at once. And then in one unanimous mass they swept along and in another moment they were clinging fast to the magnet on every side because iron is always attracted to the magnet. Then the magnet is mined for the steel fillings had no doubt at all but they were paying their visit to their paying their visit of their own free will. When unconscious, you do not have any will, also there is no freedom. So you do not think about it. You ask how to see what is my will and God's will. You have none. God is the magnet and you are the feelings. But you go on believing that you have your will and your choice. You think that you have chosen this woman to be your wife. You think about it again and remember this parable. Have you chosen this woman or man really? Or was it just an accident that you were 
being pulled towards the magnet have you chosen was there really any choice in it or had you been a victim of a certain impulse called love was it possible for you not to choose was it your decision then you will see that it has been has not been so then you will see that it has not been so whatever has happened in your life has happened happened more or less accidentally accidentally you were drawn to this man or woman not out of choice and you call it your choice and do not laugh at other iron feelings that are the situation of humanity but you can rise out of your unconsciousness then you have you will have will you will not be there you will disappear because in consciousness you cannot remain you cannot remain you can remain only in unconscious now let me make it clear when you are you have no will you are means you exist as ego in unconsciousness the ego exists but there is no will in consciousness the will exists but the ego disappears then there is no point of asking my will and god's will then there is no distinction between you and god you are god and god is you it is wrong to say a drop was all the time deciding to know what is ocean drop wanted to taste the ocean how does ocean taste how does ocean look like what is its nature so it remained standing on the shore chanting mantras chanting psalms singing hymns reading scriptures but it did not get the taste of the ocean how can you get the taste of the ocean by standing on the shore then it happened that it decided to take a jump in the ocean and when it took the jump into the ocean the drop became ocean and it forgot all about ocean when you are in the ocean can you think of tasting the ocean or what is the taste of the ocean you can think you can imagine how does the ocean taste what is its nature what it is taste what is its quality all those are futile non religious talks the real religious talk is to take a jump and jump into the ocean the moment drop jumped into the ocean it is no more a drop it became ocean and ocean became the drop the two merged into one another they do not have a separate entity then how can you say how can drop say my will and ocean's will the two interlap in consciousness the will exists but the ego disappears then there is no point of asking my will and god's will then there is no distinction between you and god you are god and god is you because god is co- ultimate consciousness that permeates through the entire cosmos this is why hindu scripture says isha vasim idam sarvam yat kinch jagat tyan jagat ten tek ten punjitha magradha kashyasu the absolute consciousness permeates the entire cosmos 
if you flow with it you can enjoy the fruits of the existence if you flow with the ocean flow with the ocean then you are not only oceanic but all the treasures of the ocean belong to you you can enjoy their fruits the whole problem can be reduced to a simple thing to be conscious or not to be conscious the unconscious man exists without any will he only dreams that he has will the with consciousness ego starts disappearing on one hand and on another hand will arises i repeat this with consciousness ego starts disappearing on one hand and on another hand will arises but it will not be your will instead with it will always be god's will then you are not existing any more as a drop instead the totality exists you are total your will has merged into the divine will your existence the drop has merged into the ocean it is no more drop it is ocean and there is a beauty when the drop becomes ocean but it will not be then your will instead it will always be god's will then what is the difference between unconscious man and the conscious man the difference is it is always difference is always that of god's will the difference always is that of god's will the unconscious man thinks it is my will and the conscious man knows i am not only god is so god's will is the difference always is that of god's will the unconscious man thinks it is my will and the conscious man knows i am not only god is